this is basically a franchise that I grew up with watching with my mother overseas. It's a cult classic that a new generation uh, has now gravitated towards. So my son Courtney and I are going to be talking about the, uh, the different things that we saw. We're going to talk about the deep argument that continues to permeate throughout this franchise in terms of the ending and all kinds of other stuff. So on that particular note, um, let's, let's, let's dive in. So tell me about what you initially, you know, just some of the things that you liked about the movie in terms of your initial observations of, of what you just dug about the original, you know, 1982 movie. Let's start there, bro. Okay. So I remember back when I first watched it, I didn't really watch it. I didn't put a whole lot of intention into it. I didn't really, I wasn't, I wasn't really all that into it. I, I just kind of looked up at bits and pieces and then I saw the ending and I was just like, okay, it was, it was kind of scary, but it was cool. But as I got older, I started to hear more and more about it, especially as it pertains to theories and people calling the movie a masterpiece, people calling it, you know, slept on and underrated. So that's really when I was like, you know what, I want to give this another try because it seems like it was worth going back to and rewatching the movie. I mean, I was, I was blown away. I couldn't believe how much I didn't appreciate what I was watching because this really is one of the best suspenseful alien horrors like of all time. I mean, it, it really did set, set the standard for what horror movies are today. And my first initial thought of it was really, how could this movie have done so poorly when it first came out? Because you would think this would be an immediate hit. I mean, I, I was just blown away when I first watched this. So, I mean, this, I, I just, <laughs> I should have, I should have started watching it sooner, really. When you first see the thing, it's imitating a dog from the Norwegian camp. So, I mean, right in the beginning of the movie, you're just thrown into the situation. I mean, you see this guy shooting at a dog and then really it holds that scene for like a good, you know, three, four minutes. And you're just really wondering what the hell is happening. So what I really like about the thing creature in this movie is how it's how vulnerable it is and yet how dangerous it can be, because it doesn't just outright attack everybody. It needs to sort of kind of go through the situation a bit it only ever really reveals itself when it absolutely has to and it would prefer not to reveal itself because as we see in the prequel the thing doesn't really protect the fire all that well so every time it reveals itself it's vulnerable to to death really so that's why the thing's first move when it first gets to the camp is to infect one of the crew members as we see in the little silhouette. And then it's next um, sort of order of business was to infect all the dogs because they would be a lot easier targeting and getting to the other crew. And it just kind of goes on that little, it goes in that little strategy of having its defense be its offense and that really makes it a lot more frightening because it doesn't just outright attack you. It kind of takes everybody out from the inside and it kind of just goes from there. So that's, that's really what I like about the thing creature itself. Most of the times I don't have high hopes for prequels. Usually prequels are usually just not that good. And obviously they're inferior by design because it's a prequel, but I did feel like for the most part for the 2011 version of the thing that they did their job. Uh, they, you know, a prequel's job is mostly to tell the backstory of a film in terms of what happened, what brought us to the, the characters, to the place that we initially saw them get to, and some of the circumstances that created the dynamics that we see within the original movie. The prequel, I feel, did do that, and I I know you'll cover some ground here in a second with that. Mm -hmm, Obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some details and things like that that there probably could have been covered a little bit better. There's maybe some continuity things that possibly could have been, you know, executed a little bit better. But I still like feel like overall the prequel did its job, which is to set set you up for or to tell you the backstory of what we see. Your thoughts on the prequel, sir? <laughs> My initial thoughts on the prequel. Oh, wow. That's, I got a lot to say there. So my initial thoughts on the prequel is that it's a very modernized version of a great movie. It feels like somebody 
they didn't want to make they wanted to make their own little thing movie like it doesn't feel like this movie kind of stands on its own it definitely feeds off of the original to kind of give it more substance and i i just i don't feel like this movie did its job for a lot of reasons one of the main reasons for me is the treatment of the thing creature itself now i've said this a whole bunch of times but i'm going to say it again the thing just doesn't act very intelligent in this movie at all i mean there there are moments where it reveals itself in front of like 10 people it somehow gets away but inevitably it's going to get torched i mean it reveals itself when it really doesn't have to there's a scene where we have our characters on a plane and one of the crewmen is infected and they start to land back down to the ground and the thing decides to reveal itself for no reason at all. And it could have easily escaped and gotten to civilization then. I mean, it really didn't make any kind of strategic sense for it to do it, for, for it to do it there. And it just, it doesn't really have that, that kind of defense as an offense. Cause even towards the end of the movie, it, it assimilates one person and it turns into this giant creature. And I'm just thinking to myself, like if the thing can just turn into a giant creature and kill a whole bunch of people in one scene, then why does it, you know, take this more defensive approach just a few hours later into the original movie or the next movie, chronologically speaking. So I would understand if they were taking a more, okay, yeah, I would, I would understand if they were taking a more, the thing is more naive approach. And during the 1982 version, it learned a thing or two about humans and it is adapted. But there you it, go. That's it, exactly it, what I was going to say. Yeah. Yes. But it, that's just speculation. You know, we never really get to see the thing's progression. It just feels like they it just feels like bad writing it doesn't feel, i feel like i'm giving the the screenwriters more credit than they deserve by saying that i just think it's bad writing and bad treatment on on their part of the creature all right i'll address that and and you hit my my point exactly on that what you're seeing is again in the prequels the creature was at a certain level it may have initially come out more aggressive and and and, and revealing itself and not being as strategic the next movie represents the next day or, you know, the next week or whatever. So when the dog went to the next camp, it said, okay, I'm dealing with a whole new set of people. I see that I can't just jump out there and do that now. So that's why you have a more strategic one. So I feel like the writers are respecting the lore, so to speak, perfect. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about the conclusion of the 1982 one. Let's, let's, let's get to the controversy. But before we do that yet, yeah, now, you had a big problem with the with the prequel in terms of the CGI. I personally, I mean, I get it to, you know, too much of a good thing is definitely a problem, but I feel like they, they kind of added some more details, some more depth to the creature's designs and what it could do and use. Cause in the, in the original one or whatever, with it, you know, you you kind of got to see it take someone. Mostly you saw it devouring people. Mostly you saw it attacking people, to, to which you didn't really see it making the transition except for after it was dead or after they were peeling back the layers after they were doing an autopsy of someone or something but in the prequel you kind of got a chance to see the switch happen how it really reacted to someone how it really imitated someone i thought it was cool but i could understand how people who grew up with the original or who loved the original like more uh, of the more classic traditional puppet feel go so I feel like my, so first of all, with the human transformation, I mean, was that really something we needed to see? I mean, how many times have we wanted to see something and once we saw it, it wasn't as good as what we wanted it to be. So for me, it's, it's, it's sort of up to the imagination. Like once you see it, you know, once you know what it looks like, it's not gonna be as scary as what your imagination was telling you what it was. So I just think it kind of loses some of that factor. Now, as for the CGI, the CGI is incredibly disappointing in this movie. Not only is it ugly, it's distracting. I really don't feel scared by some six foot eight CGI monster. It's not real, it's not practical. It's not something that I could go in the studio and actually touch and actually interact with. It's, it's a computer generated image. And when I think back on the movie, I'm just like, 
It's just, it doesn't feel as real or as, it doesn't have as much weight. It's not as grounded as a practical effects animatronic. Now I know practical effects, animatronics, stuff like that, you know, those are difficult. And I'm, there are many times in the making of the thing that a lot of scenes weren't gonna happen because they were too difficult because the practical effects weren't coming together. But it just, it just feels lazy to me how a movie in, eight, in 1982 has better practical effects in a movie that came out almost 20, 25 years later. It, it just feels like lazy progression to me. And what pisses me off probably the most is that the studio actually had all practical effects for the monsters. Every single scene had a practical effects monster. But once they did the screening, like the original screening, the studio thought that the movie looked to 1982 and they over they overlapsed the CGI on top of all the animatronics and top of all the practical effects. So everything that we saw actually had a real uh, contraption made for it. And I saw some of the test footage for it and it looked amazing. It looked a little corny at times, but that realism factor, knowing that that's actually something that, you know, unfolded before my eyes, that is what gives it that horror effect. Now, if the practical effects weren't as good as they were back in the day, I still would have respected them for trying, but the fact that they overdid everything with CGI really ruined the, the thing experience for me. And that's probably my biggest issue with it. His chest actually opened up and closed. Like that was real. That was something that they had to make. I mean, all the I, all the details that they put in that scene, it was just incredible. It just seems like that that lost art of, you know, spending a hundred days just to get one frame. It just seems like it's lost. I mean, I know CGI is easier, and it's probably you know less strenuous to put on on the screen than having to work with an animatronic. But again, I just it just feels. It just feels lazy. It just feels lazy. The controversy about the ending. You know, mm -hmm. some people some people believe that, mm -hmm. you know, both of the people at the end of the thing were infected, uh, being that it was uh, McGreedy and Childs that were left. Some people think that uh, McGreedy's a guy. Some people think Childs is a guy. There's theories around, you know, the, you know, one person, you can see their breath, There's and you can't see the other one. There's a theory around McGreedy, you know, giving childs uh, some 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 gasoline, masked mm -hmm. as alcohol, and the fact that he drunk it and he was not affected. You know, a lot of people feel like that signifies he's a thing. And you know, John Carpenter is fed into this controversy by saying one of them at the end of it was infected, but he left it ambiguous. So. I will let you go ahead and get your theory out on it, and I will go ahead and respond and close us out. So on the theory, um, I don't know if you mentioned it, but I'm just going to say it out there. Oh, you did. The uh, breath. It's not seeing the vapor come out of his mouth. That That's, that's right. debunked because when Bennings was transforming, like when he went outside in the snow and they burned him, he had vapor coming out of his mouth. So I think we can pretty much say that one is, uh, that one's not true. There's another theory. Have you ever heard of the eye gleam theory? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So Childs doesn't have the eye gleam in his eyes, but I don't think that's enough to kind of, to kind of make a conclusion on there. But um, so just to add some context, you believe that Childs, is the monster at the end of the movie. I'm going to let you finish what you have to say and then I will break it all down for you, sir. Well, I, at the, so I think alluding that one of them is the thing is the point, but I also believe that that's also the misdirection because I don't think either one of them are the thing. And here's why. So Childs had the flamethrower. He was walking behind McCready and he, if he was infected, he could have easily have burnt, burnt McCready and went to the snow and fell asleep and been done with it, but he chose not to. I mean, whether that's because uh, McCready had the gasoline on his belt or because of any other number of reasons, you know, I just felt like that could have been the end of the movie. The thing could have won right then and there, but Childs chose not to shoot McCready. And another thing, I think this kind of seals the deal with me um, in the prequel, the 2011, The Thing, 
they made a really big deal about the thing not being able to imitate inorganic materials. And if you if you look very closely on Child's ear at the end of the movie, you will clearly see that he has on an earring. And since the thing can't imitate that, I think that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good hint that at the end of the movie, everyone is still paranoid that they don't trust each other, but really the thing has been destroyed. They had one, but they had no idea because at the end they didn't trust each other and they were all paranoid. So I think that they are both human and us, him leaving the movie, him being John Carpenter, leaving the movie um, ambiguous and sort of uh, shady I think that was the point to elude that one of us, one of them is the thing, but I don't think either one of them is the thing. I think they're both human. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Respect. I um, see it differently, of course. I, uh, I, I, I tend to definitely, first and foremost, I will listen to the director of the movie because um, I don't think it's a misdirect. I think that he said that one of them is infected at the end. And I think that in the end, one of them is infected, but obviously leaving it, you know, you know, ambiguous is, is, is by design in order to continue to draw suspense and, and, and you know, and excitement and, and anticipation towards the movie and to do exactly what we're doing right now, which is having a discussion about it. So, there you go. So yeah, all publicity is good publicity. So I feel like based upon the movie and again i'm looking at the movie and what's going on and i'm going to address your uh can't imitate inanimate objects thing too but i feel like based upon the fact that the director said that one of them is infected i have to look at both characters and i have to look at the series of events that happened in the movie and i have to use that to evaluate which one of these particular characters it could be i think that based upon the actions that took place in the movie only one of those characters has time that is unaccounted for, and that is Childs. Um, McGreedy, you know, I feel I'm like, sure. I mean, ahead, yeah, but McGreedy's time out of the out of any scenes is really only short. When guy, when the guy said he when he cut him loose, for the most part, he's around, or you know where he is, or whatever. And even in the end, in terms of on the ship, he's the one that blew the damn thing up. So it's just like I feel like. If he's one of them, why the hell is he going to blow the other one up? If anything, they're going to double up and try to get it done together. Everybody wins. But anyway, that's that's a whole nother, other topic. But yeah, I would like to address that if you got the... Hey, yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm a roundup and I'm, I'm going to let you add okay. it. I won't be long. So I feel like based upon the current events, I think that it is Childs. If one of them is infected, I think it would be Childs. I think that the inanimate uh, can't imitate inanimate objects things is gone too. And I think it's in reverse because I think in the other movie, it learned that. And I think that anytime it imitated anyone and stuff in this movie, I think that they probably would put the earring back in or do whatever because it learned from the mistakes of the other one. Cause you got to understand that it's going, it has evolved since the other one. So him having the earring in to me doesn't prove that he's human. The glimmer in the eye, I think that's a great theory, but then I saw a video that showed that he had the glimmer there too. So I think that again, just based upon the fact that he is the only one that we really don't know what happened. And even the character, McGreedy goes, he greets him and goes, where the hell have you been? That's the first question. So for a character to ask that question, that means that the person he's asking must have been out of the scene for enough of a time for the person to really notice that they were missing. And the movie, I mean, he says, well, I went to go look for somebody, whatever, but it was super vague. So to me, if anyone is, it's him. And that's where I'm at. But go ahead, sir. So as for the ta the time unaccounted for, uh, I was going to say it, but yeah, McFreedy did have a lot of time unaccounted for, especially um, when he went up to his shack to see who was in there or what had happened after the light came on. And also um, when he was making his sort of note to himself, his recording, he was also by himself before he met up with Fuchs and then Fuchs mysteriously died. So there was time unaccounted for McGrady there. So he couldn't have gotten infected there. So it's a smaller chance, but it definitely could have happened. And okay. um, there's, there's no telling that he could have um, put someone else's blood inside of his little, his little test and then kind of 
made himself seem like he was okay when he wasn't. But I'll get, I'm just, just throwing that out there. That's a lot. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's a, you see how with McGreedy, you got to create a lot more and go, well, maybe. Whereas with Childs, you do have a certain block of time where you go, well, damn, where the hell were you? But yeah. I think I think it's all solid. I think that all perspectives are valid and all, all perspectives are solid and everything you know can be looked at a certain way. I think that the controversy will always continue to be, to be there. I think that we'll be talking about this for many, many years. And my hope is that at some point in time, the director will come out and just kind of tell us. But then again, why would he do that? That would stop all the discussion. You said uh, that McCready blew up the final thing for him, as we know of. And if he was infected, you asked why they would do that. And, and multiple times in the movie, especially in the 2011 movie, they say that each individual cell is its own personality, its own little, its own little creature. Right. And you realize after the defibrillator scene, when he got his hands cut off, once the thing was burning, its head decided it, it decided to break off and get away and escape from all its over all its 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 original host. So there's a, a very good um, there's a very good chance that there were mul there were multiple people infected at one time. Palmer was infected at one time, and um, and uh, uh, guy who did the test on the science machine. What was his name? Um, you know the character um, at the very end. At the very end, who was infected? The old man. What's his name? Uh, Blair. Blair. Yes, yes. Blair and Palmer were infected at the same time and there's a good chance that they were both um competing with each other to try and take control and to escape because if the i i mean blair blair thing was building that spaceship it seemed like all by himself while palmer was still in with the other crewmates so there's no saying that blair thing would have absolutely left without palmer thing and kind of went its own way so if McCready was a thing, I think it's possible that he could be competing with the other thing for power. But, you know, that's that's just what I think. Just just throwing that out there. I think uh, that's a good. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point of discussion. It's curious to note. I don't think the thing can imitate memory, because if you remember in the 2011 version, it infected one. I think it was the leader of the science division in Alaska, and he decided to run away in one of the uh, the snowmobiles. And when we see the thing again, we can see it turn on the window wipers and it's trying to learn how to drive the snowmobile again. So I think each individual thing has its own memory from other creatures it's infected. And when it goes to one person to another, since you can't technically create memory, I, I think it loses all its memory. Well, it doesn't lose, it, it doesn't have its memory of the other the thing it has, yeah. to its own. Yeah, it has to learn all yeah. over again yeah. it doesn't know the host memories and such so it's basically yeah it's a passenger within the vehicle of the host